the log of 100 to the base 10 is equal to x. What is the value of x? To find the answer, it's a good idea to write this in the exponential form. It can be written as 10 raised to x is equal to 100. Remember, the answer to the log is the power to which the base needs to be raised. Here as the base is 10, we are asking 10 to what power will give us 100? We know that 10 to the power 2 gives us 100. The value of x is 2. What if log of 1000 to the base 10 is given to us as x? What will be the value of x? This can be written as 10 raised to x is equal to 1000. And as 10 cubed is 1000, the value of x will be 3. Notice that if we take the logarithm to the base 10 of powers of 10, we get numbers like 2, 3, 4 and so on. Now how does this help us in real life? Look at these numbers. They range from being tiny to huge. And we do come across such numbers in real life. 1, 10 and 1000 are commonly used. This can be a person's salary. This is the approximate distance from the earth to the sun. And this is the approximate number of cells in the human body. Now assume you have been asked to plot the following values on a number line. How would you do it? We cannot mark natural numbers like this because these large numbers won't really fit into our little notebooks. If we mark 0 and 10 raised to 14 here, these tiny numbers like 1, 10 and 1000 would lie super close to 0. So what's the solution? How about we take the logarithm of the numbers to the base 10? What will be the log of 1 to the base 10? 10 raised to 0 is equal to 1. Hence we have a 0 here. Log 10 to the base 10 will equal 1 as 10 to the power 1 will give us 10. Log of 1000 to the base 10 will equal 3 as 10 cubed is 1000. Similarly, we get 5, 8 and 14 here. Now I want you to tell me, can these numbers be easily plotted on a number line? Yes, a scale from 0 to 14 is enough. Large numbers can be easily plotted using logarithms. Also notice that there is a very large variation between numbers. Logs also help us in narrowing down these variations. So in layman terms, we can say that if the events vary drastically, we can use logarithms. And a very common example of that is the Richter scale which is used to measure earthquakes. It uses a logarithmic scale. To understand this, let's talk about the earthquakes that happened in three different countries. In India, there was an earthquake that registered a 6.0 on the Richter scale. In the US, there was an earthquake that registered 7.0 and Japan had an earthquake that registered a 9.0 on the Richter scale. Now what does this really tell us? The Richter scale is a base 10 logarithmic scale, which means they are in the form log m to the base 10. Don't worry about what this m is. We don't really want to get into details. Just that log to the base 10 of something gives us these numbers which tell us how strong the earthquake is. So if log of m to the base 10 is 6, what will be the value of m? It will be 10 raised to 6. If log a to the base b is x, then in the exponential form, b raised to x will equal a. Hence 10 raised to 6 will equal m. And in these two cases, m will be 10 raised to 7 and 10 raised to 9. This will help us massively in understanding the Richter scale. The values of m tells us how strong the earthquakes are, while the Richter scale is used just to represent these huge numbers using a manageable scale. So an earthquake measuring 7.0 on the Richter scale is actually 10 times stronger than the one that measured 6.0. So while the difference between 6 and 7 might seem small, it's not really like that. And how strong was the Japan earthquake as compared to the one in India? It was a thousand times stronger than the one in India. And it was 100 times stronger than the one that occurred in the US. That's how logarithmics are used to measure earthquakes.